Here's a physics problem that stumped me when I was in high school. We have a train at some distance from the train station, let's say 90 kilometers. There's a bird sitting on top of this train. Both the train and the bird will start moving towards the station. The train will start moving at 10 kilometers per hour. And say the bird will start moving a little faster, say 30 kilometers per hour. For simplicity, we're gonna imagine there'll be no acceleration whatsoever. They're gonna instantly start moving together. When the bird reaches the station, it turns instantly and now starts flying back with the same speed. Again, when it reaches the train, it's going to turn instantly and it's gonna keep doing that until the train reaches the station. Now the question we wanna try and figure out is what is the total distance traveled by the bird until the train reaches the station? Hmm, how do you solve this? Well, for inspiration, I heard there's a famous story around this problem. Apparently, a bunch of people asked this exact same question to John von Neumann, a famous mathematician who's known for his very fast thinking. Now, surely it wasn't this exact same problem. I cooked up my own numbers over here, and so probably what he got was a variant of this. But the highlight of the story is, Neumann answered this question instantly, <gasps> shocking everybody in the room there. So how did he do that? Well, there is a twist to this story and we'll get back to it towards the end, but in a few minutes, even you will be able to solve this problem in your head instantly. And then I'll give you another challenge problem to test your understanding. But before you begin, if you like conceptual science and would like to stay updated with this channel, please consider subscribing it. See, the moment I looked at this problem, I instantly jump into solving it. And the way I'm thinking about solving it is I'm thinking, hey, all I have to do is first figure out what is the distance that the bird travels in the first flight. That's easy, that's just the 90 kilometers. Then I have to figure out how much distance it travels in the second flight. Now because the train also has traveled some distance, which I don't know, I will have to set up some variables and probably solve an equation. I think I can do that. And then continue doing that over and over again and keep adding it, which means I'm thinking some kind of a series summation is going to be involved. Now, when I put all of this together, it sounds overwhelming. It feels like, oh my God, <laughs> I don't think I'll be able to solve this problem. And just think about solving it instantly, forget about it. But I think that's the beauty of this problem, or for that matter, any puzzle in the world. If the first method that comes to your mind, the most straightforward way seems overwhelming, maybe a good idea would be to just pause and think about solving that problem from a different angle altogether. And I guess maybe there's a life lesson in here as well. So let's do that. Let's look at some key features of this problem. The first thing I notice is that both the train and the bird are traveling at uniform speeds. Remember, even though the bird is changing its direction, in the problem it's stated that it does it instantly. So the bird is always traveling at 30 kilometer per hour, the train is always traveling at 10 kilometer per hour. The second thing, and I think this is the key feature that gets missed out when we directly jump into solving the problem. The second key feature is that both the train and the bird have the same travel time. They have equal travel time. They both start together, and then their journey ends together when the train reaches the station. So they have both traveled for exactly the same time. Okay, now I think it would be a good time to see if you can pause and just look at the problem, look at the key features and see if you can answer it in your head. Go ahead, give it a shot. Don't worry about getting it right. Just give it a shot. Here's a clue. We know that the bird is traveling thrice as fast as the train. So can you from that think about some connection between the distance traveled by the bird and the distance traveled by the train? Well, because the bird is traveling thrice as fast as the train, I know that at any moment when I pause this movie, the bird must have traveled exactly thrice as much distance as compared to the train. It doesn't matter whether the bird has changed its direction or not, they've both been traveling with uniform speeds. Which means if I know what is the total distance traveled by the train in this entire journey, then I can just immediately tell that the distance traveled by the bird should be thrice of that. So, 
do we know what the what is the distance traveled by the train in this journey yes we do <laughs> The train is at 90 kilometers far away from the station, therefore the train travels 90 kilometers by the time it reaches the station, and therefore the bird must travel thrice that distance, that is 270 kilometers. Isn't that wonderful? So as we reflect back on the problem, we realize that the puzzle tried to make us think that we need to focus on the fact that the bird is continuously changing its direction and we need to think about the distance it travels in each of the flights. But as we take a step back, we realize that the most important feature is that they're traveling with the uniform speeds and they're traveling with the same time, so I don't really care that the bird is changing its direction and what the individual flight paths are. So I guess what this taught me is sometimes when you want to solve a problem very fast, ironically, maybe the best way to start is by slowing down. Ready for the twist in the story now? So after Newman surprised everyone with his quick answer, the guy goes, ah, so you know the trick, huh? Most people do it the long way, using the series summation. To which Newman replies, what trick? I did the series summation. <gasps> and now, as promised, here's a challenge question. Instead of a station, what if there was a second train here, moving to the left at, say, 20 km per hour? What would now be the total distance traveled by the bird? And because I know you love challenge, the second question is, how much of this distance was traveled to the right, and how much of this distance was traveled to the left? Do let me know in the comment section what your approach is for this challenge problem. See you.